All right then, gang. So now we have a complete book list application where we can read data, create new data, delete data, and update data. And all of that was done quite easily using HTMX attributes and very, very little extra JavaScript, which is awesome. Now in this lesson, I want to put everything together that we've learned so far to add a search feature at the top of the list so that we can search for book titles and get some kind of real time response in the browser as we type. So there's a few things we need to think about in order to make this search feature. First, we need to make an input field for the search bar on the home page. Then we need to figure out how that search bar can trigger a request and send the search term with that request. On the back end, we need to handle those requests by using the search term to find matching books in the data. Once we have those matching books, we need to return a list template containing those books. And then finally, we need to take that list response and swap the current list with it so we only see the matching books. So let's tackle each step one at a time, starting with the input field that we need to make on the home page. So this is going to be a very simple template at the top of the main tag. What we'll do is create a div first of all with a class of search. And then also I'm just going to apply some inline styling to this because I don't think I added these to the CSS file. So we'll just say text align is center like so. All right then. So inside this div, now we just need this input field, which is going to be of type search like so. We also need a name field, which is also going to be of type search. And in fact, what I'm going to do is place these on separate lines because we will add more attributes and otherwise it's going to get a bit messy. There we go. All right then. So let's also add a placeholder. Placeholder is equal to search books by title. So we're just searching by title, not author dot dot dot. And then as well, when we kind of submit this search, we want to send a post request. So let's say HX post and set that equal to forward slash books forward slash search. Okay, so now we have the import, we also need to say what triggers the post request. So let's say HX dash trigger and set that equal to key up, meaning that every time we type in a new key to the import, we want to perform a new search by triggering a new post request. Now also, I want to tack on a couple of trigger modifiers, which change how the trigger works. So currently, whenever I try to press a key in the import, that's going to trigger a post request, right? And that's okay if we're pressing letter keys or any other key that changes the input value itself. But what if I press the alt key? Well, that doesn't change the value that we're searching for. So I don't want the key up event of something like that, which doesn't change the input value to trigger the post request. So we can use a modifier called changed after this key up to say only trigger the request after a key up if the value in the input has also changed. So that's the first modifier. The next one is a delay of about 300 milliseconds. So to do that, we just say delay, then a colon, then 300 ms. And what this does is add a delay to the post request whenever a key up event happens, which changes the value. And that delay keeps getting reset every time this key up event happens. And it means that if we're typing a word where each letter gets typed quickly, we're not making a request after each key. We're essentially waiting until the user stops typing for this amount of time, this 300 milliseconds, until we trigger the post request. And that's way more efficient than making multiple requests on every single key up in really kind of short spaces of time. All right then. So finally, we need to specify the tag of the response HTML when we get it, which remember is the full list of books, a URL with a bunch of LI tags inside it. And the target needs to be the book list div where they get output when we also click on the button on the homepage to make a get request. So let's add that in as well. And once we've done this, I think the search input on the front end is pretty much done. OK, so now we need to handle this post request on the back end inside the app.js file. So let's make a new route handler underneath all of the other ones, which is app.post, since this is a post request that we're making. For the path, we'll say forward slash books, then forward slash search. And then we also need a function as a second argument to handle the request, which takes in the request and response objects as arguments. Now, inside this function, we need to do essentially three things. First, we need to extract the search term from the request body. Second, we need to filter 
the books data to exclude any books whose title doesn't contain that search term. And finally, we need to use the create list template to make the HTML for the list of filtered books. And then we can send that back to the browser as a response. So let's start by getting the search term by saying const text is equal to, then it's request.body.search. And then I'm also gonna use a method on this to lowercase. And the reason I'm doing this is so we can match letters regardless of what case they are. We'll also be using the same method on the book titles in the data that we filter for the same reason. Anyway, now we have the search term or text as we've called it, and we want to now get a new array of books based on that text, right? Where the text matches some text from the title of the books. So let's do this by saying const books is equal to books underscore data, and then use the filter method and invoke that method. And the filter method fires a function for each item in the array that we use it on. And it returns either true or false for each one. If we return false, we filter that book out of the array. But if we return true, the book stays in the array. And then the filtered array is stored in its constant. So very importantly, it doesn't alter the actual book's data array. We just create a new filtered array based on that and store it in this constant. Okay, so let's take the individual book into this function and we're going to call it b then inside that function i'm going to say b dot title and then use that same method to lowercase and then i'm also going to use another method on this called includes and as an argument to that method we need to pass in the text that we have and what this method does is it checks if this text is included within the title and if it is then we return true and that book then is going to get, it stays basically in the filtered array. And if it's not, then we return false and the book gets filtered out of the array. So now we'd be left with an array of books only where the title matched against the search term. So now all we need to do is return an HTML template by saying response.send. And what do we want to send back? Well, we want to send back a list of books, right? And that list of books is going to be based on this filtered array. So we have the template for the list right here. So all we need to do is invoke the function create list template. And then we need to pass through the books that we have, the filtered books. So let's quickly go through this again and see what's happening. Inside the index file, we have the input field, right? And we send a post request whenever that post request gets triggered. Remember, we have the key up event to trigger that but we only send the post request when the value changes and after this small delay. So when that post request gets sent, then it sends the value of this input by default with the request body to this endpoint. We handle this post request right here and we get access to the search term. Remember the name of the field is search and that's why we say over here, request.body.search and turn that to lowercase. We get an array of filtered books based on that search term where the search term is included within the title of any of the books. And then we use this function, create list template to create the template for those books right here. And we send them back to the browser. Now, when they get back to the browser, we've said the target is the book list. So that template is gonna replace whatever is currently inside the book list at that time. Now, that might be the button or it might be the current list of books, but it replaces all of that. So let's give this a whirl now. Now, actually, before we try this in the browser, there is one more thing we need to do that I've just remembered. And if we take a look at this, we say create list template and we're passing some books. But in the list, we don't actually take in any books as an argument, do we? We just map through the books data. So what I need to do then is accept this and then we want to map through the books instead. Now, this makes it a bit more reusable because the books can be dynamic and we no longer need this import at the top. What that also means though, is that we have to pass in all of the books when we first load the list of books. So I'm gonna go back to the app.js where we have the homepage stuff, or where is it? Where we grab all the books. And it's this one right here. So when we send a get request to forward slash books, we invoke that function. Now we have to pass in all of the books data so we can accept that as this argument and map through them, okay? All right then, so now let's try this in a browser. 
Okay, so we see this search form up here and I've just added a couple more books just so we've got some stuff to play with. And what I'm gonna do is search for, let's have a look for a word that's in three of them, of. Okay, oops, I don't want to change it. Of, so it's in these three, but not the top one. If I type that, then we can see of. And notice it waited until I typed the full word. So not directly after the O, it doesn't make a request then, it waits until I've typed the full word and that's because of that delay of 300 milliseconds. Now, if I change this again and wait 300 milliseconds, then we should see an update. Now we don't because the other title doesn't have an O in it, but if I delete again, then we do. So that's what that little delay is for. So let's try this again. I'm gonna type in final and now we see just that one book, awesome. Okay then my friends, so that's the end of this HTMX for Beginners course. I really hope you enjoyed it and hopefully you enjoyed using HTMX yourself as well. I've really had a blast using it over the last few weeks and I can't wait to make more content about it in the future, so keep your eyes peeled for that.